Okay. Um, I want to welcome you to the unit called webinars. Um, first, a short introduction on unit call and what we are here for. And um, so, well, unit call is a network uh, of the unit that program, and uh, which is that we uh, collaborate together to make education and training happening within the European com community. Uh, Human Call is supporting the community, and within the community, we share and cooperate to make material and courses um, and reuse material, and we help each other when needed to provide training to our people. I was wondering, have you already found the www.humancall.eu page? Um, this is a page where all training material will be collected, which is available for your use. And if you look at the training catalog, then you will see an overview of all the training available right now. The unit call webinars is something that is requested by the unit call steering group um, to organize more webinars for forecasters. And it shouldn't be like uh, weather briefings or event weeks, which are already there, but only one presentation each month or two months on de different topics for about one hour on, for instance, fog, icing, convection, communication, warning system, or anything else that is interesting. At this moment, uh, Paulina from SMHI, Claudia from Media Swiss, Wilfried from DWD and Rob Groenland from uh, KNMI are organizing it. And please know that they are always open to more contributions from your side. Please contact info at umacal.eu if you have an idea which can be used for this webinar. Um, in a few moments, the first webinar will take place, which uh, will be uh, Rob Groenland talking about the plans for an early warning center at KNMI. The next one will take place at the 9th of December at 10 UTC, and it will be on the uh, global climate scenarios, and it will be done by uh, Troben Koenig, and he is climate researcher at the SMHI Rosby Center. So I hand you over now to Rob Groenland um, for his presentation for this first webinar. And I really hope that you will have fun um, with these webinars in the, in the future. Rob, the ball is going to you. Yeah. Okay. Let me see because I have to share my screen now. Um, let me see. Okay, um, welcome everybody. I hope you can see the first slide. Is that correct? Yes, thank you, uh, Isolda. Um, well, as uh, Helene said in her introduction, this is the first uh, Humid Call webinar to share ideas, to share content, uh, to share training ideas and all things like that, but also developments in organizations. And, and in the next hour, I hope to inspire you, to give you new thoughts, ideas, uh, on the hand of what I'm going to show you, of course. And that has to do with the first subject, that is the, the, the development of an uh, EWC, and that stands for an early warning center. It's, it's, I think it's a, quite a common a term nowadays, since a couple of years. So, um, well, um, let's go to the to the next slides. 
Um, a, a, a very short introduction about myself. I uh, got my um, uh, master's degree in the, the early 90s in mineralogy and physical oceanography at the University of Utrecht. And uh, well, after my studies, I, I, I first started my career at, at the commercial weather service, uh, Meteor Group. And in 2005, I uh, started my career at KDMI. Um, and I worked as an aviation forecaster um, in the forecast office. And nowadays I'm, uh, I'm a trainer, but also I'm, I'm a climate advisor. Um, and maybe some of you know me from uh, some modules I, I develop. I um, normally train meteorologists at KNMI, but also from the military. So that's um, a very short uh, introduction. Um, uh, a little bit about KNMI, a few slides. Um, it's um, yeah, our national knowledge institute for weather, climate, and seismology. And uh, we, we are quite old, I have to say. We are founded in uh, 1854, and we are situated in the build since uh, 1897. So that's quite a long time ago, and we are part of the, uh, yeah, we are agency of the Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management. And in this slide, you can see a nice image of the building. It consists of two buildings, and the total amount of employers are around 400 nowadays. And the central forecast office is somewhere, maybe you can see the cursor is, is located over here. It's it's on the on the roof of the of the building. Um, well, we have a sort of general mission, and that is that we advise and warrant the society to reduce risk in the field of weather, but also climate and seismology. Um, well, uh, we are trying to do that with with the high quality knowledge and technology, of course. Um, and, and we also have the responsibility for an extensive measuring network in the, in the Netherlands, but also a little bit outside the Netherlands. I will come to that in the plans for the early warning center. The main task, just as a summary, that we uh, supply all kinds of products in a 24-7 uh, uh, time frame. Uh, that's that's merely from our central forecast office that we uh, supply that information, but also in the background in terms of doing research, uh, but also the climate scenarios. Um, but then the question arises: Why do we want to build an early warning center? Well, um, to focus on 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 a sort of main goal that. We are developing that EWC because we want to do the, the warnings uh, a lot better. We want to warn earlier and more accurately. But we also want to combine information with all kinds of other layers of information that can also be the spread of a disease in connection with uh, uh, climatology uh, information, meteorological information. And we also uh, provide in terms of climate scenarios, but also future weather scenarios, to yeah to uh, to to add uh, uh, some um, yeah important information towards the the, the policy makers. It can be the policy makers in the, in the region, but also the policy makers in the, the Hague. And well, as a sort of gen general statement. Uh, I think it's important that 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 the stakeholders, customers, users, that they have time for for action, for the prevention of uh, for accidents and damage, of course. That's that's of economical value and safety value, and 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 for customers, it's also important to adjust their travel plans and activities, and in terms of in cases of severe weather. You, you can also think about uh, evacuation. Okay, well, uh, the general vision of an early warning center is that we provide the, the society 
and also the professional stakeholders with timely and detailed independent and reliable information. And it's merely um, yeah, based on, on hazards uh, in the topics of weather, climate, but also earthquakes and other geophysical, geophysical phenomena. Um, and um, in the background of this vision, uh, KNMI is also improving their uh, IT structure uh, so that we can uh, use that, that, uh, uh, those improvements for our services, our products, but also yeah, using the state-of-the-art infrastructure. So that's, that's parallel to the development of the early warning center, that we also improve our uh, IT uh, environment. A little bit about the roadmap. Um, in this slide, you can see uh, four yeah, segments. If we start with the upper one, that's the warning segment. So um, we are trying to improve our uh, warnings and our warning system in a sense that we want to zoom in a little bit more so that you can receive warnings on a, on a, on a, on a local scale. And we also uh, want to do it in a sense that it is um, uh, connected to the impact. So that's, that's more or less called a, a, a multi-hazard yeah, warning system. So that you not only look at uh, meteorological information and, and thresholds, but you also connect it to, to, the, to the impact. Um, the second sentence that's, that's related to the forecast that we, of course, in the meantime, trying to improve our uh, our forecast, uh, and that's that's more uh, more or less dependent on the resolution of the uh, high resolution models. And um, nowadays, we also to try to combine it with machine learning and um, artificial intelligence. And I have to say, we are in a sort of yeah experimental phase because. As, uh, 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 as you probably know, in, in, in the whole world, they are, they are trying to do experience with those kinds of techniques to improve your forecast. Well, the, the climate part is also a very important one because we want to get out a lot more information out of yeah, uh, climate scenarios, but also to relate, for instance, extre an extreme weather event to climate change. That's, I think, uh, a relative new subject, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit more in the plans for the early warning center. And well, at KNMI, we are also trying to uh, to send out the information through social media, apps, extranet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, in this presentation, I think it's useful for you, for your own inspiration. Uh, that I give you some examples, and uh, uh, it seems a whole list, but I will go through each of them, and um, in a sense that I will show you images and some uh, little text about the examples we have in our mind. Uh, that will not mean that we all convert it into products, but uh, I'm sure that we uh, in this list we will use most of the examples in the next five years. And uh, well, as you can see, it's, it's not only um, the, 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 those early warning services, the, those examples, it's not only based on local weather or local climate information, but we also going to look outside the Netherlands, as you can see, in, in some, of the, some of the examples. Well, to start with the first one, that's the regional forecast of extreme rainfall. In this image, in this slide, you can see two examples of a so-called uh, limited area model ensemble with a hydrostatic model, which we uh, have uh, skipped nowadays because we, we, we more or less 
uh, went over to the harmony on the right, but on the on the left you can still see the Hillam ensemble uh, with um, information, ensemble information about the probabilities for uh, pre precipitation over a threshold of 70 millimeters. But on the right you can see our newest uh, non-hydrostatic limited area model with a resolution about 2.4 kilometers. And we can use that information uh, now, but also in the near future, to develop uh, early, yeah, um, early warning products. In terms that you can have a clue about the, the probabilities of uh, that, uh, yeah, some uh, thresholds will be exceeded in terms of uh, precipitation. And that's, that's an ongoing development in, in our uh, research uh, de department to enhance the, the use of, of, of the harmony and especially the harmony ensembles. And I have to say that in our forecast offers, they, we, 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 we still need to train with those ensembles. So it's just in the beginning phase that we use the uh, yeah, short-term ensembles for typically the next uh, 24 or the next 48 hours. So it's quite a new development, I have to say, at KNMI. Well, a little bit uh, outside the Netherlands, <laughs> we go over to the Caribbean, where we have uh, um, um, yeah, a, a few areas that is connected to the Netherlands, uh, islands like uh, Saba and St. Eustatius, they are connected to the Netherlands. And, uh, we, uh, we have the re responsibility to provide weather forecast, also aviation weather forecast, for those islands. And, uh, well, we, we, we are also planning to do uh, a lot more in terms of uh, uh, warnings and now connected to uh, uh, volcano warnings. And that's in um, cooperation with the uh, uh, colleagues in the United States as well. Well, this is a nice example of using um, 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 uh, information from our uh, climate researchers in terms of that they investigate with the help of climate models the impact of a warmer climate on extreme weather events. And this, in this example, you can see uh, Ophelia. I think most of you recognize that, uh, yeah, quite amazing situation that the remnants uh, of of Helia um, went into Ireland uh, a few days later. And on this satellite image, you can see the situation at uh, October the 15th, in 2017, where you can see a tropical cyclone. And on the right hand side, you can see the, the, the track of the conversion from the tropical cyclone into a uh, yeah, typical mid-latitude uh, or an extra tropical cyclone, I have to say. And the, the challenge is that within our climate research, and that is, uh, KNMI is doing that, but also other climate centers in the world, that you gain some more insights in those calculations in terms of the, the probabilities that in the near future or in the future, um, the remnants of those tropical cyclones will influence uh, Western Europe. So that's, that's I think, also a, a, a quite promising in, in, in terms that, that the climate models will, will have an increase in their resolutions. And, and, and in, the, in the next few years, I, I think you can expect some more uh, useful scenarios. Well, as I said, we also um, uh, look at the Caribbean and uh, we provide the, our uh, yeah, Dutch Icelands in the Caribbean with the detailed weather forecast. And we also have to monitor the hurricanes. We do that in, in, in cooperation with the yeah, National Hurricane Center in Miami. And, uh, but we also uh, uh, do some experiments at KNMI in increasing, improving the uh, prediction for 
yeah, hurricanes in the Caribbean uh, Netherlands. Um, well, as you know, 10 years ago in 2010, we had a, 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 a big uh, um, uh, uh, aardbeving in, in Iceland. And uh, that has a great, a large impact on the aviation. And um, at KNMI, we are uh, also preparing a product that is combining observations with the model forecast. And uh, in this slide, you can see a uh, emphasis on uh, SO2 clouds. And we can monitor that with uh, our uh, Tropomi satellite information. And we can combine that with, uh, with our uh, models so that um, in the future we are able to make a sort of forecast for, I think, to start with the short term. But uh, you can also look at three or four days ahead. But I think in the, in the beginning you will especially look at the, at the, at the, at the short term. Well, um, our aviation, our uh, air traffic control center at Schiphol is a very important stakeholder for KNMI. Um, so we also going to provide the uh, air traffic control center with uh, a lot more detailed information. And in this slide, you can more or less see that um, uh, we are developing uh, new products which they can use for yeah, for their own operation in, in terms of uh, to, to provide the, uh, to give them the, 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 the chance to, to have longer gliding path with uh, less noise and less uh, CO2. And that's what, what is very important is that we uh, also have a data stream since five or six years from aeroplanes in terms of mode S, so that, that gives, gives a uh, a, a lot more detailed and accurate information uh, based on uh, on planes, and we combine it with, of course, with model information. So that's the strength that you, yeah, combine remote sensing information with the model information. Well, in the sense of the energy transition, we also planning to provide more information with within our early warning center. In terms of that, uh, uh, we combine model data with uh, Internet of Things data and also with remote sensing data so that you can have a, quite an accurate view of uh, sun and wind energy in information. But we are, yeah, these are just plans, so we are in the, in the beginning phase of it. Well, um, uh, the society asks for more detailed information. I think that's also your experience in, in your country. And uh, that's an ongoing process. And with the yeah, increased resolution of our models, in combination with an increase, increased uh, resolution of the observations, like the uh, IoT, yeah, that stands for Internet of Things, you can combine that information in, in a very nice way, and I've seen some very nice examples over the last couple of years, and um, that gives the stakeholder the op opportunity in, in, um, in, in uh, yeah, to, to look into uh, a lot more detail about what is going on in your own village or in your own city. So, yeah, that's called weather and climate information or forecast for the city. And in the end, you will have some, you will have information on street level. Well, this is also based on an, uh, the, with the help of, in this case, Kratoma data uh, from the satellites to enhance the wind forecast for hurricanes. And that's 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 not only by looking at that information, but also to use that information in your model again, so that in the end you get much better model res uh, results. Well, forest fires, um, it, it can have a big effect on the weather in the Netherlands. 
uh, but also in, in Europe in general. And on the right hand side of this slide, maybe you remember that case. Uh, we had some um, yeah, enormous forest fires in Portugal. And that influenced the amount of radiation in, the, in, in many parts of Western Europe. And well, it's, it's quite amazing that, uh, that a, a few thousand kilometers from your source, you have an influence in terms of temperature of three or four degrees. So that's, 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 that's important. And it, it had also its influence on the aviation, as you can see in this slide with some uh, 10 or 15 scheduled flights cancelled. So uh, nowadays, and also in the near future, we are um, working on a product which combines satellite data with uh, model data to incorporate this, this effect on the, on the, for instance, uh, radiation. Well, with all those plants, the, I think the, the customer in general will get some more accurate information, but also more detailed information in terms of time uh, and, and, and spatial information. So then you end up with a personal, personalized risk profile so that you can more or less um, uh, choose your own threshold and that you get a warning in terms of a color or a sign on your uh, smartphone, for instance, when the threshold will be uh, exceeded. And this is just one of the examples. Well, for um, the health part of the early warning center, we are also focusing um, on winter and summer smog. And well, it's quite logical, as you can see in this slide, that, that can have a big effect on the, on the, um, uh, on the health. Um, and I think some something went wrong, sorry about this. I think that there is some other text from the slide before <laughs> ended up in this slide. But um, as you look at the images on the right side, the right hand side of the slide, you can see an example of winter smog in Paris and some summer smog in the Netherlands. And what we are trying to do is to combine uh, actual information with uh, model information. And there are several models running uh, for a couple of years now. And we are trying to improve those, those models to get uh, some more accurate information about, for instance, the prediction for summer smog uh, in the in in the in the Netherlands, and the same counts, of course, for for the for the winter smog conditions. Well, we also have the responsibility for um, to inform our stakeholders, which uh, uh, monitor the the state of the dikes, for instance. And we had a, a, a quite nasty accident in 2003 in a small village called Wilnes, that's uh, just to the south of Amsterdam. And what happened there was that because of the drought, um, uh, we had a very porous dike, and the dike broke. So there was a, a, yeah, a lot of water running into the village of Wilnes. Um, but uh, apart from the drop, we also have to monitor the earthquakes. And nowadays in the Netherlands, we merely have the, the man-made uh, earthquake because of our gas winning in the, in the north of the Netherlands. Um, so within our early warning center, I think that's, that's a good example of a multi-hazard approach that we provide uh, information from KNMI towards the stakeholder and that they can combine it with uh, their information. And it's, yeah, it's also based on um, yeah, what happened in the, in the past. So they look in, into a, a data set and, and try to, to find a connection, a causal connection between uh, some, yeah, uh, meteor environments and, 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 and the state of the dikes. What is also very important is that with um, 
But the, the increase of resolution of our uh, climate models and also mesoscale models, we are able uh, to simulate the weather in the future uh, based on those models and uh, based on research, of course, so that we can uh, more or less uh, give the stakeholders, especially within the water management, a lot more accurate information about the intensity of, of uh, storms, of showers, for instance. So, um, and they use that information for their own, uh, for instance, water storage information in their cities and villages, so that they can calculate uh, those events to develop a sort of stress test for their own environment. I think that that's, that's a very good example, a useful example also in the Netherlands to uh, to make use of, of uh, future information. Well, this slide refers to also very detailed information, but now in, in terms of uh, yeah, uh, that you get a, a, a sign when extreme uh, rainfall uh, is expected. And we can do that a few days in advance, but you can also do it uh, 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 one hour in advance. You can see in this slide more or less a sort of example of uh, the, the normal radar images you can see on the left. And then um, uh, we land this image from uh, Deutsche Wetterdienst that you can see in uh, a Naukas mix, mix. So uh, in, an, uh, in, the, in the next year, we are going to develop a sort of similar me uh, methodology in which based on radar information, you can yeah, inform and warm uh, customers uh, partly based on an automatic product. And then the meteorologist, the forecaster in the forecast office can uh, adjust those uh, warnings uh, a bit. Well, um, it's also important that we combine this type of information, meteorological information, climatological information with uh, impact. So that in the end, uh, all kinds of, uh, for instance, mobility partners in the Netherlands uh, can make use of this this information so that they can warn their car drivers, for instance, as you can see in the, in this slide, by matrix boards or by radio or or by their smartphones to inform them in time so that they will stay at home, for instance, in terms of when you have a combination of very extreme rainfall or when you have a combination of pre precipitation and temperatures below zero that can also give rise to very yeah, um, serious impact-based uh, uh, situations. Well, um, for the long term, uh, we also provide information and also within our early warning center, we, are, we have plans to inform stakeholders about how they can make use of our information to design a city and then you incorporate more or less climate change. So the, you can look in um, more on a time scale of 30, 40 or 50 years to, 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 yeah, to, um, to develop a city or a village in a, a little bit different way if in comparison with the, with the past. And that has to do with, of course, with heat and water storage, uh, mobility, air quality, CO2 emissions. So that's, that's, that's I think, also a very important uh, uh, part of our early warning center. Um, well, if we talk about climate information, at KNMI, we, uh, once in the six or seven years, we develop uh, and issue climate scenarios. And that's more or less in connection with the uh, newest assessment report from IPCC. And the newest report, that's the, the sixth assessment report, and that will be issued in uh, 2023. And in uh, parallel to this uh, assessment report uh, within KNMI, we are preparing some more yeah, 
uh, new scenarios, detailed information about the uh, climate scenarios in the Netherlands. And this is more a, a sort of timeline in which you can see the themes and the products. And as you can see, uh, next year, in 2021, we are going to develop um, a sort of climate signal. That's a sort of pre um, information amount uh, and we are going to use the website uh, we are developing a dashboard but, but we also provide that information through climate letters and of course publications the peer-reviewed observations and as you can see we make use of the IPCC special re uh, reports but you will we also do research within KNMI to um, yeah, to to, to give a, a, a much accurate view about the implications or the transformation from the IPCC models, the R, uh, R6 models into the more regional climate models to get some more detailed information about the future climate scenarios for, for, the, for the Netherlands. Well, this is an example a screenshot of how a climate dashboard can look like. And um, as you can see, you can see um, yeah, some um, information about the climate, climatology information from the past up to now. And then in relation to the information that comes out from the climate scenarios. And um, we can also do that with, uh, for instance, the very short term information that comes out from the EPS, from ECMWF. And to compare that with um, uh, um, how rare uh, um, a specific actual weather situation is, and also in relation to the climate scenarios. So that's also a way of showing uh, information to the customers, in which they are able to uh, immediately compare it with uh, the climate in the past, the current climate, and also the future climate. <clears throat> okay, this is, um, yeah, I think um, a nice image in, in terms of, of uh, how an early warning center can, can look like. Um, well, as you know, we have a central forecast office. Um, that's, that's, that's also in the future the, the base of our early warning center. But I think it's important to mention that... Um, um, and that's also embedded in the, uh, the last reorganizations at KDMI that we are trying to communi communicate a lot better between our departments within KDMI and that we also look at some first line and second line uh, um, um, information. And the first line comes from the central forecast office and the second line is a sort of circle around it and then you have to think about the um, uh, research department the, the the income of information and the communication from the researchers but also some applied research then you have to think about what comes out of typically uh, research with a duration of two or three months in which you're trying to develop a, a, a new product so there is a lot of interaction and communication and, and verification uh, between those two lines. And in the middle, you can see a table with um, a few people sitting around their laptops. That's called a, a quick response team that you, uh, uh, that you need to have a, a, such a team in the background. Uh, besides the central forecast office. So that's, of course, a 24-7 uh, uh, operation. And in terms of when uh, something is happening in the, in the Netherlands, in terms of health or an earthquake or uh, volcanic activity uh, or smog, then you can have a sort of quick response team. Then. Okay, I think, yeah, this... This is the, a very short summary, but I think, yeah, sometimes a summary is, is very useful to keep it very short. And that is the, the, the main purpose or the main goal of our uh, EWC, 
our early warning service is based on, on uh, to warn earlier and more accurately to combine the information with uh, other yeah, data fields in our society so that you have a sort of multi-hazard uh, uh, system and to use weather and I forgot also I forgot to mention the climate uh, scenarios as well but to use weather and climate scenarios for policy purposes okay and I think that is yeah that this is the last slide so I'm a little bit faster than I expected and I think there is now room for questions of course that's also very important to to have a sort of first reaction from your side and maybe you have ideas from your own institute or organization as well you you can share with us because that's also one of the goals of this webinar that that you you pop up with with ideas as well of course and, and maybe i've inspired you with this presentation for your own ideas about an early warning center thank you for your attention Are there any questions? Oops. Are there any questions? Maybe you have to unmute. Oh, they, they can unmute it the, themselves, of course. Yeah. Oh, they can't. Or they can't. <laughs> they have to raise the hand. I see uh, hands from Anastasia. Bob, can you uh, offer, uh, uh, Thomas Love, can you help out, please? Anastasia has raised the hand. Anastasia. Anastasia, I I can try to open her. No. I'm not able to unmute her microphone. She is unmuted now. Oh, she's unmuted now. Okay. The floor is yours, Anastasia. Or is this my difficult guy? And all of my Stanya, Renko. Tanya, hello. Uh, your voice is. I I I um I can hear your sound. I ca I cannot. Is it better now? It's um only a little bit better, but it's very difficult to understand you. I can hear the sound, but that's all. I was sorry to to to, to hear that. I will try just to comment. Thank you for your presentation. It was very nice. I uh, really liked a lot this uh, idea of uh, weather and climate forecast for the city. This sounds very, very interesting, and I hope that we will hear more about this in the future. So, this is all for me. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Don't think so. Yeah, people can also uh, leave their information in, uh, in, in the chat, of course. Oh, there's but Saskia Wilson. Go Saskia. Saskia Willemsen. You need to unmute yourself. And Anastasia is in the background. Yeah, but Saskia was on her way to say something. I hope. Oh, yeah. And Saskia. Hello, Saskia. Please speak.
Yeah, it it seems that it is not not working, and I I can see you now, Saskia, in the on the video, but it seems not. Yeah. Um, what's going on? So. Um, So I try try to from my side to uh, unmute uh, all. Yeah, Kaskia, you can talk now. And I I'm, don't know what is happening now, but I. Uh, unmute everyone, everybody. Who is making noise? Is seeing something? <laughs> Don't think it's going to work. Please leave your question in the chat window. And if you go, I hope to see you back again on the 9th of December at 10 C for the global climate scenarios. Yeah, and uh, um, I, I would like to say that if if you have uh, questions, you can um, and you, you really want an answer in the short term, you can also send me an email. Please do that. So don't hesitate to to send me an email with your thoughts or or your specific questions, please. Uh, that is a question. Yeah, that's. Um, from Helene, and um, it's um, my my first name is with one R, <laughs> so it's Rob. Oh, oh, Groenland. <laughs> if you scroll up, there is a question from uh, Solfrid. Oh, what's your op opinion about impact warning? Should it be more uh, tight relations with other organizations or users? I think working together. Um, okay, Cora. Oh, yeah. um, Robert, what's your opinion about impact warnings? Uh, should be more tight relations. Uh, I think we're working uh, together. Uh, yes, um, Isolda, um, that's um, a very relevant question. Yeah, I, okay. Yeah. Um, um, in the development of our early warning center, we, of course, we do have contact with other organizations and to 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 look into those other organizations to find out uh, how uh, uh, yeah you know, how they think uh, or how they work with uh, early warning center concepts. Um, so it's it's in relation with uh, other organizations in 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 Europe and and also the users. That's also very important. That in the in the building up of in the, in the building of the products, it's it's in yeah it's in in cooperation with the stakeholders. So um, um, and actually the the sometimes stakeholders um, inspires us to uh, build. Uh, a product, so it's 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 not a, a one-way uh, communication. It's it's merely a, a, a two-way communication. Yeah. And uh, I got a question from Solfrit. How will this early warning be connected to the National Climate Center, that also are common all over Europe? Um, that's more or less the same answer as I gave to Isolda. That also in terms of the development of climate scenarios. We also look at other countries uh, like uh, Switzerland and Belgium. Uh, they develop climate scenarios uh, some five or six years ago that are quite similar to the climate scenarios in Belgium, uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, but we also look at at England, at the UK, at the UK Met Office, office about the way they are. Yeah, treating uh, climate scenarios. And from uh, Jane Hansen, Jana Hansen, I got a question: How many forecasters have you at attached to the fast response team? Well, it's um, for the time being 
up till now it's a little bit of a theoretical um, story because we still have to build the early warning center but I think um, in the end um, I cannot give you an exact, exact number of, 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 uh, of people of, of forecasters but uh, uh, you can imagine that we, we, we are thinking, thinking out what, what is best in terms of that you can um, have enough people when uh, uh, something is happening. So that will be prepared in the future because it's, it's planned for the next year, five years uh, till tw uh, 2025 that uh, uh, we are building this early warning center. also an interesting question concerning the weather warnings. How much will be issued automatically and how much will be issued by the forecasters manually? Well, I think um, uh, it depends a little bit on the type of product, uh, but um, uh, overall you can say that in the course of the time, in the course of the next years, that uh, the automatic part will increasingly will build in so will have an impact or its share in 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 the product itself and uh, for instance if you look at uh, severe weather warnings uh, up till now it's 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 merely based on uh, manual assumptions and that's that's of course in the background based on ob objective uh, model result, uh, results so it's a combination of model output and model output statistics where we base our yeah, objective uh, probabilities on. But in the near future, uh, you can expect that, 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 uh, that in, in the warning product itself, the automatic part will, uh, will increasingly uh, will be incorporated so that you end up with uh, maybe half-half half automatic and half manually, yeah. And um, even kijken from Saskia. And even kijken hoor. Um, yeah, some of the topics is related to our um, uh, service towards the air traffic control center at Schiphol Airport. Um, and it's yeah, it's not directly related to the warnings. Why is it part of the EWC? Well, um, it's it's. I think it's it's part of the early warning center because um, uh, the the air traffic control center is a very important stakeholder, and it's also one of the stakeholders at KNMI who first made use of probabilities, for instance. And, and, and to, to work with probabilities is, is I think, a base for a, a lot of products in the, in the future. So um, um, a lot of developments and experiments we, we already have done with the Air Traffic Control Center by, by uh, developing products in which uh, uh, interpreting probability information is very important. So that's, that's, that's the reason from, from a history uh, perspective that we also, yeah, that, that it is also part of our early warning center uh, ideas. Even kijken, how early warnings will you try to make? Uh, it's mainly now casting and just a few few hours ahead. Will you try and make warnings several days ahead, pre-warnings? Yeah, interesting question. Um, I think for uh, for convection, for instance, uh, we base our early warnings on, uh, on the short term, so a couple of hours, and maybe a pre-warning a, a, a day in advance. But for a synoptic storm system in the winter time, we are able uh, 
uh, we are preparing products in which we issue a sort of pre-warning four or five days ahead. And we have got quite good experience nowadays with the ECMWF uh, EPS information that uh, uh, in terms, in situations with synoptic storms in the winter time, you are uh, able to make a quite useful uh, pre-warning product four or five days ahead. So, um, yeah, it depends on, on the type of weather. Uh, there's a question from Camille, and that's uh, concerning the volcano warnings. Will you be cooperating with volcano advisory centers? Um, but yeah, yeah. I think we uh, we will always cooperate and work together with the uh, volcano advisory centers because that's that's sort of base information. And we cannot de deviate from those uh, uh, advisory centers. I think the, the, uh, the, uh, these advisory centers are the, the base again, and they remain to be the base. And that also counts for the National Hurricane, Hurricane Center in Miami. That's, that's also a sort of uh, basic information you cannot de uh, deviate from. You can also you, you can only work on some uh, more detailed information from from for your own area. It was also a comment. I forgot to mention that that uh, my colleagues Rob Sluiter and Jeanette Weingaard, they are more or less the project leaders of the early warning center. So uh, you can ask me questions, but I will of course also contact those two persons and Saskia will also yeah ask their questions to Rob and Jeanette that's 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 okay yeah Okay. Yes, thank, thank you for your compliments, all of you. I can I received some compliments through the chat. Yeah, it was a pleasure doing uh, and giving this uh, webinar. Okay, uh, Helene and Tomislav, I think that most questions has already been asked. Ask. So I think if there are not new questions, we can close this first webinar. <clears throat>